There is a theory that dominates discourse in China's political future, and it truly handcuffs the contemporary China watcher. It is the notion that China will never democratize because of its political history and its foundations in formidable authoritative rule. However, this idea is flawed in two ways, both an epistemological approach and it is too deeply influenced by our antiquated views of democracy. The challenge is then to come up with a more realistic, empirically based understanding of China's society and its potentials for social activism. The empirical case is greatly aided by the existence of Taiwan. A full-fledged democracy now exists there, but one whose social base is still undeniably Chinese. The great majority of Taiwan's population came over in various waves from the mainland only beginning as late as the 17th century. In fact, south of the Yangtze River, and especially Fujian province, feels more like Taiwan than northern China does. Taiwanese language, customs, family structure, business organizations, religion, interpersonal relations are almost identical to those of their mainland counterparts. It is impertinent to suggest that the Taiwanese have simply been a tool of Western governments and pawns of the global media. It is quite the opposite. They painfully reshaped their society by using cultural values known to them as they reacted both to market dynamics and domestic pressures. Taiwan then asserts itself to the world that a place can remain culturally Chinese while it develops a vibrant democratic political structure. In fact, pre-1987 or pre-democratic Taiwan had many opponents to democratization and many of them held the same reservations that the mainland opponents currently hold towards their own democratization. China does not have to follow the same path, but if we are trying to determine the cultural potentials of China, the Taiwan case truly is an elephant in the room. The Nationalist Party, currently of Taiwan, and the Communist Party share the same roots during the May 4th movement, a seminal era in which much of their core philosophies were conceived. While much of their governing philosophies were incompatible, they all agreed that the local religious traditions were a feudal shackle holding back the modern consciousness of the Chinese people. Thus, when policies were enacted, both parties aggressively attempted to squelch these so-called superstitions. However, while the communists took up the mantle against these folk religions after 1949, the KMT, or the Nationalist Party, after retreating to Taiwan, actually abandoned these policies, and as a result, major religious civil societies grew from the open space. As Taiwan grew wealthier in the 1960s and the 1970s, people began to rebuild popular temples on ever more lavish scales, and certain rituals became important across the entire island. These temples remain deeply embedded in the social and political spheres of each locality. And with democratization in the late 1980s, campaigns against popular religion ended. Politicians often visited local temples in attempts to appeal to the electorate. And certain movements claim millions of members, including some of Taiwan's wealthiest entrepreneurs, 